Greetings. Here we have arrowleaf cedar, also called Indian hemp, and also called wireweed. There are quite a few varieties of cedar, and some of the most known ones or used ones are cedar acuta, cedar cordifolia, cedar eliade, and cedar espinosa. The scientific botanical name for this one here is cedar rhombifolia, and we're going to get into that name here shortly as we go through the identifying of the shape of the plant as rhombifolia means diamond shaped. This plant is in the edible and medicinal category. You'll be able to identify by noticing these small yellow flowers, generally yellow. They have five petals that overlap at the base. The edges of the leaves have round teeth. The flowers seem to close at night and open midday having this button-like or cheese wheel-like appearance which will turn brown and dry out over time and this happens after the flower is done the stem is a tough round green brownish stem and if you go to pull it up you will notice very quickly why it is called wire weed or why it was used to make brooms and cordage the mature leaves of this plant are more diamond shaped and as you get to the younger leaves you will see that they are more elongated almost lance like or arrow leaf like you may find subtle hairs on the top and on the bottom and the leaves do alternate back and forth as to where they sprout out from the stem this plant loves disturbed or hardened soil like edges of parking lots fields or areas that get a little damp with good drainage and it has a thick tap root. The leaves of cedar contain about 7 to 7.4% 7 protein and the leaves and the roots contain ephedrine. Now we're getting to the medicinal side. The ephedrine is accessed by making a tea with the leaves and the roots or smoking the leaves. Generally it is not advised to eat the seed pods of cedar as the ephedrine count is unknown. And ephedrine can interfere with some antidepressant medications. We also find contraindications if you have high blood pressure or heart issues, diabetes, enlarged prostate, or thyroid issues. You want to take caution as high amounts of ephedrine can cause issues with some areas in the heart and lung as it, as it is a central nervous system stimulant like caffeine and while it may open the lungs it is also coupled with a heart rate increase and this is a caution to be aware of if you have issues with your pressure for medicinal uses the stems and leaves you will find if you cut them and squeeze them roll them between your fingers you'll find that they are slimy like okra due to their mucilaginous nature and this slime can be used for its emollient properties on wounds. An emollient is just something that is a little thick viscous that pulls moisture and moisturizes the upper layers of the skin. It, it keeps water in them, helps to hydrate them. Crushed leaves are used for the treatment and dressing wounds. And the juice is used, squeezed to promote the healing of wounds. Ayurveda is the traditional medicinal healing practices of India, which incorporate medicinal herbs and natural substances like raw milk. And in India, this plant is called Bala, and it's used for its diuretic properties and urinary problems, including cystitis. It has cooling and astringent properties used for inflammation and bleeding disorders. The leaves can be cooked and eaten in cases of bleeding hemorrhoids so it is styptic in nature it helps stop bleeding the juice mixed in water and drank for rheumatism spermorrhea which is a emission of sperm or gonorrhea which is a std and it also helps with vaginal discharge so things with the humors of the body the discharges it helps stop that as it helps stop bleeding also as a paste, this bala or cedar rhombifolia, arrowleaf cedar, is mixed with palm juice and applied topically 
for elephantitis, which is a parasitic involved disease. And it has rejuvenating properties due to its ephedrine and it can be used to pep people up and keep you energized and awake or focused, increase focus. And its rejuvenating properties have been used for those with debilitating issues, those elderly and suffering conv convalescents. It can be rubbed topically for sore muscles, bones, joints, and nerve pains. And it's used internally as a tea for dysentery and for fevers and arthritis. The roots are used. There were some studies done on this cedar rhombifolia, and we will run through it real quickly. What was found? It was found to be anti-helmetic, anti-helmetic, which means it is destroying to parasitic worms. A stomach ache reliever. It eases bowel complaints. The powder of the root and bark is used in cases of excess urination. So you would use that from about, and when it says bark, it is really talking about the thick outer coating on the stem itself because it is a tough stem. So you would scrape that brown off, dry it out, allow it to dry, and you can use it in the case of half a spoon to a full teaspoon, stir it in water every four to six hours, and that should lessen your excess urination. Studies show that an oil prepared from the decoction of the root or bark mixed with milk and sesame oil are very effective in curing facial paralysis and sciatica as it does work on the effect of a nervine and stimulate the nerves. And if we go to look at some more studies, we may even find that it helps repair the myelin sheath, which can be affected often in times of facial paralysis. Since this is on the rise, facial paralysis or paralysis that may have come after the effect of taking something that you hadn't took before or an injury that has occurred, berries, grapes are great for repairing the myelin sheath and you want to eat as many as possible, but if you have to take a large amount quickly, you can juice it. And this will help to repair the myelin sheath internally. And that will help your nerves to carry the electricity and fire as they are supposed to. It is also found, cedar rumbifolia is also found to be anti-malarial and anti-parasitic, which malaria is a parasitic is issue just like elephantitis and herpes, which we'll see later. It has been found useful in asthma and inflammation. If any of you are old enough to have ever used Sudafed, ephedrine is the compound that opens up your sinuses that Sudafed is based off of. Scientifically, it has been proven to be antibacterial, antioxidant, anti-anxiety, anti-obesity, a cardioprotective plant, a nephroprotective plant, both meaning that it protects the heart and the kidneys and it is shown to be lipid lowering which helps to lower the amount of fat cells in blood which will help you to have a lower cholesterol level and smoked as a stimulant and as an adulterant for marijuana cedar rumbifolia has been used also in the areas of anti-cancer Again, anti-herpes as it is anti-helminthic and herpes is a side effect of the helminth worm. And it is used for drug resistant bacteria, Lyme disease, staph infections, tuberculosis, wound and eye infections, and most any infection, cedar is used and generally in places where cedar grows everywhere in the world, it is used for its antiviral properties. And it is also anti-ulceritic. Now let's step into two areas of focus that are quite interesting. The first being that of the methods used for snake bites by the communities of the Jaintia and Kasi of India. 
whether it be 50-50 in percentage or 50-50 in grams, it is the same method used by both communities and it has been shown to be beneficial in the cases of snake bites. And it will be 50 grams of roots, 50 grams of leaves, and two to three black peppercorns ground into a paste. And this paste will be taken orally and applied topically to the area of the snake bite. These people have been doing this for generations and it has been passed down for centuries using the same method. And it wasn't up until recently that it was found that Cedarumbafolia is actually a hematonic. It helps tone the blood vessels and helps to sh properly shape them, to maintain proper shape. It is a hemoprotective. It protects the blood cells. It is hemoregenerative. It helps to regenerate blood cells and protect from, wait for it, hematoxic venom, venom which is the type of venom that attacks blood cells. Also, I'm not one particularly for witchcraft or sorcery or voodoo or casting spells, but in Vudan, it is passed down that the flowers of this plant, Cedarumbafolia specifically, can be used in a perfume for one who is seeking to attract love. Recently, it has been found out that Cedarumbafolia actually contains PEA, which is phenylethylamine. And that is a neural amine that is sometimes used for depression. And it is in chocolate and secreted by the brains of athletes in the zone. And this PEA, phenylethylamine, is also associated with people in love. And I find this quite interesting as these ancient people, the sorcerers, shamans, and the tribal people, the bush doctors, have no laboratories. Okay? They don't have any test tubes and they don't have any analyzing equipment. They don't have any microscopes. And this information passed down has been shown to be accurate in laboratories on a molecular level. I'm fascinated by how the ancient people have found out this information that we still use today that we actually cannot improve or change today as their methods and applications are best as it turns out to be with the interface of the body and plants. Another caution to note is that cedar was used as an abortive, the seeds of it, so it is not to be used at all by pregnant women. And in herbal medicine, it is set to do no harm. And so in cases where there is a death in the womb or there is an extreme danger to the livelihood of the mother, abortive herbs are given to save the life of the mother. Again, not for use in pregnancy. It is to be used with caution in high blood pressure and heart issues. And it is also important to note that because of the ephedra in this plant, you may test a false positive for meth if you have to do any type of drug screening or urine analysis. So that is important to keep in mind if you have any testing and you will really want to stay away from this this plan in that case one thing to pay attention to also with modern sciences it shows that cedar detoxes soil and removes cadmium lead nickel zinc cobalt mercury arsenic and chromium from polluted dump sites and all of these elements may very well be fine in small doses and necessary in parts of the human body. But in high doses, in high concentrations, in imbalanced concentrations like you would get from the absorption at a site where they're dumping trash, you may want to stay away from that and pick wisely. If you guys have any information that you would like to share, feel free to leave comments. If you have any 
thing, information that you would like to share regarding how the ancient people came across the knowledge that they passed down, that is also welcome. Thank you for watching. Hope you found this interesting and informative. Peace. If you have any existing health concerns, take that into consideration. If you are taking any medications at this time, take that into consideration and allow a two to three hour window before consuming plants medicinally. Do not take anything that you are not sure of or that you have not properly identified. If you have any further concerns, do not consume the plant. If you would like to know what other medical implications may come about from going back to a more natural life, to a more traditional lifestyle, after you have properly identified and know the uses of plants thoroughly and you are still concerned, of course, consult your local drug dealing doctor. Oh! <laughs>